you think, um, you know, I, and I heard earlier, um, I think it was my brother Tony that was talking about, uh, you know, it's going to be a wake up call for us. Um, I feel like the alarm's been going off for about 50 years. You know, it reminds me, you know, when you get up, you know, you, you know, when you don't want to get out of bed and the alarm, your brain becomes immune to the alarm and you sleep through it like 30 times in a row. That's true. I, I don't I'm, I'm a little skeptical. I don't I don't know if I mean, you can't wake up a dead person. And I wonder sometimes if we are psychologically just dead, just in a coma. <laughs> I, what do you think it would take to wake us up, Dr. Charm? What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, a very wise man and hero of mine once said the white liberal is the worst enemy to America and the worst enemy to the black man. And that man went by the name of Malcolm X. Uh, we are we've been fooled by this liberalism. Uh, this entire inauguration, which I did not watch, was a ceremony without substance, in the words of Dr. John Henry Clark. May he rest, rest in peace. And, you know, Biden's inaugural address, he talked about white supremacy and addressed some of these racial things that have, have occurred. And so did President Obama. But as you look at the executive orders that were uh, prioritized and, and started this afternoon, not uh, he's already gone back on his campaign promise. Uh, Sean King tweeted about it, that he went back on his campaign promise about addressing policing and mass incarceration on the first day. He's talked about joining the World Health, rejoining the World Health uh, Organization, the Paris Accord, the Keystone Pipeline, uh, talking about immigration and starting an eight year path to citizenship for 11 million undocumented immigrants. All of these things have been addressed in executive orders today. And the people who put him in office, had it not been for Detroit, had it not been for Philadelphia, had it not been for Atlanta, this man would not be in office. And this is the thank you that we get. And we are continuously being used. Yes, we need to be on code, but we really need to understand political savvy and sophistication because at this point it doesn't exist. Yes, I will agree. Michelle Obama's hair was laid. She looked wonderful. And, you know, Kamala looked great. And and what is that going to buy me uh, with, with, uh, with no reparations? What is that going to get me with uh, uh, mass incarceration, with uh, two for, in many cities, two black women for every one man? I got friends here with master's and doctorate degrees, uh, a good Southern women with no husband. And, and so... These, you know, we're dealing with socially engineered issues. And yes, the ladies look great. I did. I'm not going to say Michelle Obama weave was not laid to the gods. But what good is that going to do me when Michelle is sitting up there with her husband and black women have no husband uh, are, are, are fighting for our rights? Black men over here incarcerated. What good is going to be with some Chuck Taylors and pearls if, 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 if we have no substance? He's already gone back on campaign promises on day one. So that's 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 already setting the tone for what's going to happen for the next four years. We have to be dispassionate and be acerbic in our, and have some political savvy. We have not learned from what occurred during the Trump years. We have not learned from the Obama years. The problem is, you know, to your point, sister, is that these people have not changed their playbook. You know, at this point, uh, it has, we have to take some responsibility for our own behavior. I am also an independent. I did not vote for Joe Biden. In no way in hell I was going to vote for Joe Biden because clearly he was running on I'm not Trump. Literally. And let's be very clear. The Democrats paid for those votes. You want to know what, how I know is because there are plenty of so-called black led C3s and C4s that got paid to GOTV. Get out the vote. You had rappers going down to Georgia doing free concerts. You had people doing uh, feeding people, uh, doing challenges and all of these different things. You had people providing rides. You had uh, Silicon Valley social media companies who invested heavily into the Democrats, uh, not just into the presidential campaign, but also into the Senate campaigns in Georgia. We, I agree, we are not politically savvy uh, in, in terms of the masses, but I also think we need to point to the fact that there is clear exploitation happening within our community. If you have a community who is economically dispossessed and somebody is coming with free food, somebody is coming with free this or free that, and you are in a position where you need it, of course you're going to register to vote and go vote because they are actually giving you a ride to go vote. And you're doing a wink. Okay, I got you. I'm going to go vote for this person. That's exploitation to the highest. And we don't have that language. We're not calling out people in our own community who are taking advantage of getting millions. You got million dollar activists out here, million dollar activists who came up off of the Trump administration. We need to have a full conversation about what's really happening in our community and the black faces who are uh, being paid to uh, serve us up like sheep. Absolutely. Well, you know, we know about our condition to actually kind of challenging the politicians. Um, I, I hate politics. I don't like being involved with none of that. Um, I, you know, I did something with uh, with the Obama administration a few years ago, and it just it it, it annoyed the hell out of me. Um, but I do think I do understand the importance of it, and I know that you are uh, you have an understanding of the political system. What do you think are some basic things we might want to do as a people in order to make sure that our voices are heard uh, moving forward? Absolutely. I, I think that we need to learn how to use leverage. Uh, I think we had a huge missed opportunity 
uh, this time around, you all. A huge missed opportunity to use the leverage. And, and I have to say, in terms of the census, as you all know, we just did one in 2020. Uh, our vote is actually going to, especially with Biden's plan on immigration, keep in mind, our vote is going to become less and less and less important. And we're not thinking futuristic. The, the other sister vibing with me in terms of this uh, global economy. We do live in globalism. Like we're entering into the fourth industrial revolution. I am going to keep saying that because black people need to be very clear and they need to read and do research. Um, we're in a quarantine right now in many places, right? Please use that time to read. I'll share here really quickly, uh, and I'm certainly gonna get to your question, uh, Brother Boyce. Um, on my YouTube channel, which is Real Talk Unsent, which is Real Talk with ZSJ, I have been doing a reading of the book called The Choice uh, by Brother Sam Yet. And I'm not sure if, if, if Boyce, if you're familiar with it or if any of the other um, uh, panelists are familiar with it. But the reason why I'm reading that book is it was written in 1971, literally 50 years ago this year. And Sam Yet was warning black people because he was the first black uh, White House correspondent for Newsweek. And he had access to documents and information that normal people would never have access to. And he used, he literally put his career on the line and, 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 and really sacrificed his entire life by warning black people that we were obsolete uh, to the system now and that we needed to know the tools and strategies at that time of the Nixon administration and also of Moynihan. All of these things are connected to everything that I'm talking about today in terms of how technology, which we know that technology is now affecting white folks, which I haven't had a chance to unpack, but also had a lot to do with what you saw on January 6th. White folks are feeling the pinch, the pinch that we have been feeling for decades. And the reason why we need to be very uh, clear about this, be clear, the troops, I live in the DC region. I live in this region. And the media right now, we're talking about the media. If you listen to CNN over the weekend, if you listen to MSNBC over the weekend, hell, even Fox News, they're trying to condition people to get ready to, that troops will be in D.C. from now on. You want to know why? Because they're getting ready to do some stuff under the Biden administration. I start off by telling y'all this is going to be a very pivotal administration. They're getting ready to do things that that's going to set white people off. And, and because we used to being oppressed, right? I, and I hate to say that, but we, you know, the last time we set it off was in the 60s. And I, and I don't see nothing like that happening right now with regards to black people. We're pretty much controlled, at least in this country. White people are not there yet. So the plan is, is that the military will continue to stay there. And that is gonna be their shield when white folks, they're coming for the second amendment. This is not a cons conspiracy theory. They actually been trying to come for it. They are already coming for the First Amendment. They're in lockstep with the social media companies. Again, everybody follow the money. You can go to opensecrets.org. Silicon Valley, Facebook, they poured tens of millions of dollars into the Democrats. And black people, when you vote for Democrats at this point in history, you are voting for your own oppression. Mm -hmm. I don't know how else to break it to you. And so in terms of your question, what we actually need to be doing, I think, is that black people need to be studying and we need to be figuring out alternative ways to live. We need to figure out how to get away from smart cities because smart cities is something else that's coming down the pike. We need to be figuring out how to grow our own food. We need to be figuring out how to be self-sufficient. And I mean, right now, it's an emergency. Mm. Well, peace and black power, black family. This your brother Chase back at you again with another video and check it out. You know, I, I just wanted to make a quick video. First of all, I'm gonna say congratulations to all the black voters out there that you went out in record numbers to support Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Salute to you. You know, you got what you wanted, and in return, you're gonna get what you deserve. Whether good or bad, you're gonna get what you deserve. I'm not here to bash anybody or to. You know, say, oh, y'all shouldn't have did this. Uh, you know, neither one Trump and Biden are the same. I'm not here to say that. But I'm saying you have a responsibility. If you're somebody who voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, you can become two types of people. The first, which many of you are going to become, because we've seen it time and time again, and history teaches us this. 
the first is the guard dog voter family. Now, the guard dog voter is somebody who, no matter what Joe Biden says or doesn't say, no matter what he does or doesn't do, you're always going to support him, no matter what. You're going to act as a guard dog. Anybody who has any criticism for him, when he says something outlandish, when he gets that senile vibe, when he starts talking to black people like we're his hoes, you are always defend him. Always, no matter what. You're going to make it your personal mention, mission. You did. You're going to go out here, oh, his hands are tied. He couldn't do this. He couldn't do that. That's what you're going to do over the next four years. You're not going to do any holding of accountable of any of them, Kamala or Joe. And like I say, many of us are going to fall under this category. Many of us are going to fall under this category because although we, we criticize the MAGA crowd, Many black people are the same as the MAGA crowd, just as it pertains to the Democratic Party. No matter what they say, you believe them. No matter what they don't do, you will continue to support them. Just like the MAGA crowd did with Donald Trump. No matter what he said, even if he put in policies to hurt his uh, supporters, they were always going to support him. He could tell them anything. He could tell them the election was rigged and everything. They could constantly support him. But we ain't no better on this side. And many people were going to act as guard dogs for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Now, what I hope would happen, I hope that many black people who voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, I hope that you would keep that same energy you had with Trump with them, meaning hold them accountable. Because remember, when black people like myself, like Ice Cube and others were saying, hey, man, they haven't made any promises to the black community. You were saying, oh, no, just wait until they get in office now. Wait, they, they hands, they can't do nothing. They hands tied. And we say, well, we've seen them get in office before with Obama, you know, and they, they still didn't do anything. Well, they didn't control the Senate. If we control the Senate, they're going to do something. Well, you got what you wanted. They're in office now. They control the Senate in the House. No excuses. No excuses. So we expect you to hold them accountable. Just like every move Trump made, you held him accountable, and rightfully so. We need you to keep that same energy with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. See, we got to get out this mentality where we want to treat politicians like they're our buddies, like they're family. I heard a lot of this auntie talk over the weekend and earlier this week. You did? This, oh, auntie Kamala. Oh, look at auntie Kamala. That ain't your auntie. That ain't your auntie. That is your hoe. You are the pimp. That is your hoe. We are in a business relationship together. We ain't friends. We ain't buddies. That's how you got to start treating these politicians. And when they violate, you let them know I'm in charge and you will be held accountable. So I hope that you fall under this category of keeping that same energy. Please, family. You did for the sake of the community. So all in all, take ownership. Take ownership. If you are one of these people out here bigging them up, be the first ones to criticize them when they don't do what you want. Be the first ones to criticize you. But comment below. Tell me what you think. What category are you going to fall under? I'm sure we're going to see some guard dogs in the comment section who are already the people. Man, you, you, you sound like a mega supporter. That's a guard dog. Just type one. Type one in the comment section. If you are a supporter who's going to be number two, type two. If you're going to keep that same energy with them as you kept with Trump, even though you voted for them, press two. And I respect that. You did it's your brother Chase. Comment below. Tell me what you think. Like the video. And until next time, family, peace and black power. I'm out. Black people? No. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No.